G'day ladies and gents and welcome to Mags TV and welcome to my review of the Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotaz 4. Now in interest of clarity, this wasn't a purchase of my own, this has been sent to me by Thrustmaster and is part of a deal between Gaijin Entertainment and War Thunder as well as Thrustmaster. I will come to more of that at the end of this video. So first things first, what we're going to do is an unboxing. I'm going to take a look at the Hotaz 4, see exactly what it is, looks like, get my first impressions of the device itself. Then I'm going to plug it in. We're going to put a couple of hours on the stick and see exactly what it's capable of. And then we're going to come back and give my conclusions. So first things first, let's start the unboxing. Now you'll have to pardon me, I've got a little bit of a new setup here, so so, top of the box open, and we have a good solid deal of packing foam, and we have a small plastic pocket. Now, as you can see, Thrustmaster already has a deal with War Thunder going on this particular joystick, and it is a premium pack, and this is a card for it here. Uh, it's been blanked out, so it's fine. And the code is for the premium XP38G, seven days of premium time and 500 golden eagles so that is the card there that you will find inside one of these packs um i'll actually put a link to the xp38g in the back of it this obviously is ideal for simulation style combat and the xp38g is one of my favorite aircraft in the game i actually have a really good video of this thing flying in sim so i'll be able to show you exactly what that's capable of second part here is our small user pamphlet now you'll notice the PlayStation logos, the HOTAS 4 is both PC and PS4 compatible. It's based on the old HOTAS 10, and yeah, pretty standard stuff here. Multi-language, uh, basic instructions on how to plug it in. Nothing, nothing incredibly interesting there, I don't think. So we'll put that aside. Alright, let's drag this one out. Now, small hole in the top of the phone. The box can disappear down the side there. Okay, and she comes in, she comes separated, just taking a look at this. So, this is the layout inside of the box. We part one here, so just pull the pieces out. And we'll take away the foam. So here we have it. Here is the Hotaz 4 and it is split into two pieces. Now we'll look at it. Hmm. That's not too bad. But control there. Um, Yes, now the HOTAS 4 can be operated as either a single part or it can be operated as two pieces. So, we have the two parts separated there. This allows you to split them. They are joined by a cable in the middle. Um, this can give you a, a little bit of space to actually be able to, to work the six, six, uh, sticks rather separately. Or, one, I'm trying to work out exactly how the cables tuck together here because it doesn't say... we have got... Ah! Wind the cable up underneath, take a better look. As you can see, there's a ring in the bottom section here that will take the cable. So having a look at it here, if we look at the joystick component itself, we have these two little screw positions, one here, one here. You can see them here. Fun one everything at the moment. Go away. And then we have the hook. And once these screws are in position, you straighten them and they'll lock into position. So now that operates as a single unit to take up less desk space and it makes itself a little bit more stable. Although it does put the controllers a little bit uncomfortably too close together, but that's all right. So we're gonna separate these two again. So once again, just split it, and one will unlink from the other. It's fairly grabby, but it's new plastic, so that doesn't surprise me all that much. So, taking a look at the joystick proper, the ergonomics here are actually rather nice. It fits quite nicely in the hand, got a nice good grip. We have a China hat on the left hand side, feels like full full directional, two top buttons, no, trigger on the front, the trigger feels a little to the spongy side, I generally like a nice solid clip on my sticks, 
Uh, nothing around the thumb section, just a nice grip to grab onto, nothing around the face. Overall, the actual hand support is in a really nice position, so that feels alright. Move it on the flat. Yeah, the movement feels reasonable. There is a slight rock there, but I think that's got more to do with my table than the stick. Yeah, it's got more to do with my table than the stick itself. So yes, that seems to be not too bad. And we flick over to the throttle quadrant. Now we have three buttons down here at the front. We have the PS button, options, and share. These are obviously three buttons from the PlayStation controller. The actual button limitation on this I can already see. So we look down here at the side of the handle, handle we've got triangle, circle, X, and square. We're actually based on the button layout for a PlayStation controller. The phone gets everywhere, doesn't it? Um, the throttle motion's got a 50% motion, uh, yeah, 50 position, so there is a notch just here at 50% is actually quite grabby. From 50% forward is nice and smooth, and the same in reverse. And we can see we actually have two colors on the throttle side. So I imagine this has been set up with uh, possible space games in mind as well as actual flight simulators. So you can have a 50% thrust, have 50% of your thrust in the forward quadrant, center position, and then when you pull back, you have your reverse thrust in the opposite direction. So we have, yeah, so three buttons on the side here and then one down below. And looking at the other side of the stick, we have R2, so this is our R2 shoulder button, and L2 is just here, and then we have a two-way button, which if it's anything like the button on the FCS throttle, will be bindable as two individual buttons, or it will operate as a second rudder. So obviously the main stick itself has twist functionality for rudder control, but for those who find that uncomfortable or have a tendency to turn their wrist when they're rolling, that can trigger rudder actions that you don't actually have in mind. You'll be able to bind these here and have exactly the same feature. This is actually a very similar feature. If I pull these back and bring down the Thrustmaster, the FCS throttle, one that comes with the T1600M FCS, and revert this around. Exactly the same idea with the paddle on the front. So that's what they're going for there. So on to flight testing. I'll be focusing primarily on War Thunder for this review. The stick is plug and play and War Thunder has an inbuilt profile that auto map the controls, although I did make some modifications. In standard form, the stick is overly sensitive with a noticeable dead zone, however tweaking the settings and shrinking the dead zone, as well as adding a curve to all three axes, fixed most of the issues. That being said, the stick lacked the smoothness of Thrustmaster's T16000M, most notably in the twist rudder axes, even with the curvature applied. Still, it was relatively easy to get the aircraft's guns on target. The throttle was a little more of an issue. As I noted during the unboxing, there is a noticeable indent at the 50% point on the throttle axis movement. This dip caused the throttle to stick in an uncomfortable manner. The axis was smooth enough outside of this area, but I did find myself mainly only using the upper 50% of the throttle in order to avoid this indent, which can take up to 5% of the throttle's total movement range. As for button configs, there was more than enough available to bind all basic aircraft functionality to the controllers, which is to be expected since War Thunder was designed to be playable with a controller. However, I was only able to bind the basic controls. The HOTAS 4 simply lacks the button requirements for any advanced engine management and some of the extra features. PC players can get around that by assigning engine management controls and extra buttons to the keyboard. For PlayStation players, it may be possible to buy mech controls to a second controller or to use a keyboard as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a PS4 to test that. Button placement overall was good, although there was some thumb flexing required to hit the lower triangle button at the base of the throttle. I was surprised to realise the stick also had a second button marked as the PS4 R3 button on the upper right hand face of the joystick. This button is actually quite easy to get to and essentially gives the HOTAS 4 a second trigger. The R3 button for small caliber guns and the main trigger for both small and large guns leaving the two hat buttons free for bombs and rockets. The hat was in a comfortable position to access for those needing it for view control. That being said, as with all HOTAS systems, I recommend some kind of head tracking if possible. HOTAS systems are designed with head tracking in mind. So overall the performance was acceptable. 
The HOTAS 4 is built from good quality plastics and should be quite durable, and the axes didn't feel frail, so they should stand up to some punishment in long term use. But the stick didn't feel as nice to use as some others that I have used, such as the T16000M, and the throttle performance, especially with that indent, was noticeably worse than the Thrustmaster TWCS throttle. The HOTAS 4 is pretty much designed and optimised with PlayStation 4 users in mind, and is the single best choice for a HOTAS for console. PC users, however, have a wider selection of options available, but before we go into that, it is worth considering the price. The HOTAS 4 retails for between 70 to 90 US dollars, depending on place of purchase, making it one of the cheapest HOTAS on the market. And as I said, overall its build quality is pretty good. If you're a PC player on a budget looking for a full HOTAS setup, this may be an option for you. However, it is worth considering that the T16000M FCS HOTAS pack is only a little over 100 US dollars as well. So anyway, to finish up this review, as some of you may have seen already, Thrustmaster has partnered with Gaijin Entertainment and War Thunder to offer you a rather interesting deal. Thrustmaster is looking for flight testers for the T-Flight HOTAS 4 and are giving away 5 units for free. Links to the Become a Tester program will be in the video description and in the comment section down below and the link contains all the details you'll need in order to enter. Oh and one last thing for my PS4 viewers out there. At the start of this video I showed a slip with a code on it for the XP38G which I've been flying for most of this video, along with 7 days of premium time and 500 golden eagles. That code can only be redeemed on the PlayStation Network and it should be popping up on the bottom of the screen right about now. Once again, good luck to all, and remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies. G'day ladies and gents and welcome to Mags TV and welcome to my review of the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS 4. Now in interest of clarity, this wasn't a purchase of my own, this has been sent to me by Thrustmaster and is part of a deal between Gaijin Entertainment and War Thunder as well as Thrustmaster. I will come to more of that at the end of this video. So first things first, what we're going to do is an unboxing. I'm going to take a look at the HOTAS 4, see exactly what it is, looks like, get my first impressions of the device itself. Then I'm going to plug it in. We're going to put a couple of hours on the stick and see exactly what it's capable of. And then we're going to come back and give my conclusions. So first things first, let's start the unboxing. Now you'll have to pardon me, I've got a little bit of a new setup here, so so, top of the box open, and we have a good solid deal of packing foam, and we have a small plastic pocket. Now, as you can see, Thrustmaster already has a deal with War Thunder going on this particular...